Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, I'm here with Richard with Signal Stuff Antennas. Stick around and we'll get right to it. So Richard, tell me a little bit about ham study and signal stuff and how the two of those tie together. Because I'm familiar with the antennas, but I'm really curious about how the two of those fit together. You know, it's, it's funny to actually start getting those questions because signal stuff was created for ham study. Okay. Um, and so it's, it's, I don't look at it from the perspective of starting with signal stuff very often, actually. Um, so signal stuff actually came around. Originally, I learned how to make this style of antenna when I was uh, volunteering with a youth group. It was actually an amateur radio explorer post in, uh, in Utah County, uh, which is where I met my wife, actually. I mean, years before I started dating her. Um, and, uh, and I just kind of kept doing it and ended up taking over finding the parts to build it and became, you know, I was originally in the post and I became in the leadership. And so I kind of took it over when we couldn't keep the youth group open anymore. The youth just had too many other things going on and never really intended to make it a company. Like, I, I, I wasn't starting out making a business to sell antennas. I, that found, was, that, I found that those kind of become the best businesses <laughs> out there. <laughs> Apparently, I mean, it's, it's been working really well. Uh, we, to, to nobody's surprise more than mine. Um, but uh, when I kind of took it over because the people in Utah County really wanted to, they still kept asking for these antennas. Uh, and so I talked to the other former le uh, you know, leadership of the group Mm -hmm. and said, hey, can I, can I use this as a fundraiser for ham study because I'm, I'm doing more with it. I need more servers. I need to, to be able to pay for hosting and things like this, you know, because right. it had always been kind of out of my pocket. And so I initially started selling them under the ham study name and then pretty quickly realized that if I started doing that, it was going to shut down a lot of advertising and promoting opportunities for ham study because the ham study name, if it's associated with studying, can be supported by a lot of people like ICOM and because they're supporting the study stuff. But if I start right. putting antennas on that, now that becomes a conflict of interest on things. Correct. And so we were literally sitting around my, my dinner table with some friends and brainstorming, okay, so what do we do with this? And I don't even, I think it was, I think it was my friend Michael Stuffelbeam, KV9G, or maybe one of his brothers who came up with the, the name Signal Stuff and it stuck. And we're like, okay, we'll use Signal Stuff. And, <laughs> and these can be signal sticks. <laughs> and now it's turned into a joke. And we've been talking, joking all day about the signal sleep and signal status and signal, you know, just all the, all the alliterations. Um, and so, and, and it's just grown from there. Um, and so I actually, I run Signal Stuff and sell these antennas in order to pay for the time that I spend on ham study and exam tools with all, you know, it's what people are using for all of the remote exams. Um, and so to me, this is the side business. Uh, and so it, it is kind of entertaining that, that it has gotten good enough that people see it as its own entity by itself. Right. Um, but there are some interesting decisions that I occasionally will make that people are like, why do you do that? Well, it's because the reason that I build these is so that I can work on that. Right. I'm not in an antenna business, I'm in a software providing services to the community business. Right. And, and, and this and you, is how I pay for it. And you give this away for free if I go through the website, right? The ham yeah, study? So the website is free and we're committing to, committed to always having the website free. Okay. Uh, and people have challenged me on that a few times, but it's been free for better part of a decade and, and, and I don't plan on changing that. We may add some value add things at some point, right. but the core of the system will always be free because I feel like that's important to the community. I feel like it's needed. Absolutely. Absolutely, and then the mobile apps, they're just a couple of bucks each, right? Yeah, mobile app is $3.99, uh, primarily because I've, I've taken on some partners that help me with that. Uh, there's only so much time that I have right. uh, between totally my part-time quote-unquote day job and my part-time <laughs> signal stuff, exam tools, ham study, <laughs> uh, and my wife and five kids. Um, You're a busy time man. Time runs out, and so the, yeah, so most of the income as far as help like the, my partners and me for us to actually have some benefit right now is coming from the mobile app. And so we have a few value add things on that and we plan on adding on some additional ones. Cool. Uh, but yeah, the main thing is like the mobile app is, works offline and it has uh, collaboration features so you can share your progress with your Elmer, for example. You know, if you're teaching a class, you can have your, your students share things with you. Uh, but yeah, so that's the paid side of ham study and 
the website is free, and, okay. uh, th and this is what makes that possible. Outstanding. Well, most of us out there are very familiar with your signal stick, but you also offer some larger antennas that you can run on mobiles. Can we you tell do. us a little bit about that? So we have, uh, and people have been asking me about this for a long time, and I honestly had resisted because with as, as wobbly as these things are, um, I just figured it wouldn't work very well. Okay. Uh, but I had enough people tell me, oh, I came up with a mount and I've been running it on my vehicle. I'm like, well, okay, so let's start looking into it. And uh, and now, of course, I, th I think it was you that did the, the thing on, uh, mentioned the, the mag mount recently, and that's a, actually a really cool option that you can put the signal stick on your vehicle, which works, honestly, f way better than I ever thought it would. I ran it uh, all the way from Nashville to Dayton, and I had fantastic APRS results. Yeah, so. it's, uh, that honestly shocked me. Um, <laughs> but, but I wanted something that was really a, a vehicle antenna, and so I came up with this one, which is I called the signal stock, because we already discussed the, the pathological, uh, everything has to be alliterative problem that we have here at signal stuff. <laughs> um, and so I, it's got thicker wire, so this is a two and a half millimeter instead of one and a half millimeter wire. Okay. Um, I decided not to put heat shrink on it because the heat shrink is what wears out in the weather. Right. So instead we've got a nice black oxide coating. Okay. And then we stuck this little little tip on it, but this is actually essentially the same design as a signal stick. Okay. Just much more durable and put on a NMO mount base. And so we don't sell the, the bases because there's a zillion different types of NMO mounts. Right. And I run this out of my basement, so I'm already having troubles with the 10 boxes of these that I have to deal with <laughs> periodically. Um, not to mention all of the boxes of, of shipping envelopes. Right. It's right. A, a weird, weird small business problems. Uh, but this is actually a fantastic little antenna. It's a quarter wave on two meter, three quarter wave on 70 centimeter. And the really cool thing about this is that it's still super elastic. So. Oh wow! I mean, you go underneath a tree, and, and you can see that one did keep a little bit of a of a bend, but it'll go back. And if you don't do it quite that tight, right, it's it won't do it at all. Pop right back. Um, and so they're still super elastic, uh, and we've been, uh, yeah, just really happy with how those perform. Outstanding. But people kept asking about, oh well, this is great, but now we want a half wave option. And of course, my reaction was. Night and all is so floppy, there's no way that'll work. Right. Well, it turns out it actually does work. Uh, so this <laughs> took me a while. Um, and the way we did it is we got a th even thicker down here. So it's not quite as flexible down at the bottom, but it's still, you know, not bad. Still pretty flexible. I'm not gonna, not gonna complain too much about that. Right. And of course, this one is not, maybe not quite as durable because there's this to catch on. Right. But again, I mean, you're still talking about how many antennas can you do that with? Yeah, so you're not gonna break it if you uh, um, go through a parking garage. Certainly not easily, no. Um, and so this is a half wave. This is, I call this the half wave signal stock and this is the quarter wave signal stock. And uh, and I've been running this on my vehicle for about a year. And I mean, it, it, it if you go through a, a real bumpy area, it'll kind of be wobbling all over the place, but right, I can I've see never that. had it hit my vehicle. I mean, it's It definitely oscillates more than a typical wire whip. Outstanding. Um, but, but it works great. The, the one issue we did run into is my initial batch uh, had the typical night and all problem of getting limp when it gets too cold. Right. Um, and so we now have a low temp option that has a uh, wire that's, that's good 20 degrees colder than it was. I'm looking into that possibility for the signal stick. I've got some samples coming, but I'm still kind of, I'm skeptical that that's gonna work, but who knows? We may have an announcement coming up in, in, in coming months on that, but. Uh, awesome. But these really make great antennas. I've had some, some fantastic reviews on those so okay. far. Now, where can people learn more about Ham Study and Signal Stuff? Signalstuff.com is where we sell all of our products. Uh, and hamstudy.org is the, is the website. And uh, probably on your favorite online uh, ham radio community as well. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm a firm believer that people should study in the way that works. And I think that often other people and, and you know, experienced mentors have better advice on how to use the tools available than I may. My, the only th one thing that I do feel strongly about is that practice tests are not a study method. They are a benchmark. So when you're studying for whatever exam you're studying for, take your practice test and use that to figure out how close you are and where you need to study and then use something like study mode or if for some reason you don't want to use ham study or if you're using a book to supplement it, which is also a great way of doing it, uh, use that benchmark to figure out where to focus your study 
and then come back and take the practice test as a benchmark. I see people all the time that just take practice test after practice test after practice test saying, yeah, I'm studying, which is kind of like studying for your math test by throwing darts at a math textbook and saying, <laughs> okay, let's study this now. Um, I've, actually, I've actually done some, some statistical analysis on this and it takes an average of 84 pr fully random practice tests on the technician exam just to see every question on the exam a single time. Oh, wow. That's an average. That's interesting. Which means half of them will be more than that. And that's just to see everything once. Wow. So with a random exam, you really need something more than just random. You know, with, with a pool this size, you need something more than just random. You need something more focused. And that's the, a lot of the reason why we created Ham Study is to provide tools that will help you narrow your focus and get a little bit more success in, in, uh, in narrowing and preparing for your license exam. Absolutely great advice. Richard, thank you so much for taking the time today. Thanks for coming and by, Jason. I'll, guys, I'll leave links down in the description below so you can run across these products and find them easily. We'll see you guys on the next one. 73. Until then, 7-3.